G'day, I'm Ethan. And over here on this leaf is the minuscule Eastern Sedge Frog. And he might not seem like much, but he's a glimpse into a whole different world of wildlife that only appears as the sun drifts beneath the horizon and the night sets in. It's a world full of strange beady-eyed amphibians whose calls radiate through the night. And with their appearance at dusk come a whole slew of frog-eating predators. In fact, most of Australia's mammals, reptiles and amphibians thrive in the darkness. So tonight, I'm going to be exploring this beautiful patch of bush in search of not just frogs, but a whole stack of strange nocturnal creatures. Now the main group of animals that I'm going to be looking for tonight are the snakes and luckily for me most of the species out here prefer to dine on frogs so my plan of attack for tonight is to stick close to these billabongs uh, that continue way further down that way and a little bit further up there because uh, there's a lot of water and of course where there's water there's going to be frogs and where there's frogs there's going to be uh, frog eating predators like snakes mammals and who knows what else so i'm going to start off looking around these billabongs and we'll see where we end up and speaking of amphibians i've just found our first animal of the day this <laughs> is the notorious and terribly invasive cane toad and he's really not a good sign because these guys have led to the drastic decline of frog-eating predators across Australia and the reason is because inside those two little glands just below the eyes is a highly powerful bufotoxin that has the power to kill anything that eats it in a matter of minutes or even seconds and these guys are absolutely prolific out in this area to the point where I could be out here for a few hours and find hundreds upon hundreds of these guys now I'd normally kill them but just for tonight, since I'm going to be focusing mainly on snakes, I'm going to let this guy go. Off he goes. We'll definitely be finding more of those guys tonight. And boy oh boy, did the swamp turn up a whole bunch of frogs. Oh, look at that. He's, he's staying still. No. That's a striped marsh frog, one of the most common species out here. You can probably barely see him. And he's off. They're sometimes referred to as rocket frogs, and you can certainly see why. They just bound around all over the place. Here we go. This is the species that most Australians think of when they hear the word frog. And he blends in so well to this bit of grass. That is the green tree frog. And I mean, just look at him. How can you not fall in love with this species? He's just a little chubby green blob of cuteness. But don't let that fool you. These guys are actually voracious predators, and that's exactly why he's out here. He'll be feeding on all your crickets, spiders, cockroaches, pretty much anything he can fit in his mouth, even other frogs. In fact, these guys have been observed in the wild to eat microbats and small snakes. How insane is that? An amphibian that can eat bats, that can somehow catch them on the wing as well. Now during the day these guys hide uh, in tree hollows and rock crevices and 
as their name suggests, up in trees. And their beautiful, absolutely beautiful green coloration helps them blend in perfectly to the leaves of any tree. What a cool little critter. Good luck on your hunt. Let's keep going. Well, this beautiful patch of swamp and billabong uh, sure did offer up a whole bunch of different amphibian species, but as of just yet, it hasn't given us any snakes. So I reckon, holy crap, that's huge. That's, that is massive. This will work quite nicely. There we go. That is one gigantic huntsman. Now this spider is perfectly suited to her environment. If you have a look at her, she's flat like a leaf and that allows her to wedge herself up underneath the bark and hide from daytime predators. Come on in you go. There we go. Well, as I was saying, uh, the swamp didn't offer up anything. So I reckon what we're gonna do is turn our attention away from this beautiful swamp and head out onto the path. And it didn't take me long at all to find my first mammal of the night. <laughs> Look at this, an echidna. I feel like it's a tradition at this point. We've been finding one in pretty much every single episode. I have no idea where he came from. We've got swamp either side of the path here, but insanely, these guys can actually swim and they can swim really well. So, I mean, he probably didn't, but he certainly could swim through here if he really wanted to. What a fantastic sign. If these guys are out and about, who knows what other mammalian creatures are out in this patch of bush. Let's keep looking. But as I continued forward, I began to get the strange feeling that I was being watched. Oh, look at that. Yellow-footed antichinus, he just ducked. Oh, he's, he's, right, he's still there, he's right there. He's just in that log. <laughs> this is so cool. Now, he may look a little bit like a mouse, but he's actually a Dazzyurid species. Um, so he's a carnivorous marsupial, which means he's related to quolls and even the Tasmanian devil. He's probably in there munching on some ants. There's plenty of, there's plenty of uh, Campanotus, which are sugar ants, running around in there, and I just saw him take a chomp out of one. So that's pretty cool. The craziest thing about these guys is that during the breeding season, which occurs around August, the males will mate vigorously over the course of 12 or even 14 hours straight to the point where they die at the end of it from stress, overexertion, starvation, and dehydration. So <laughs> it's a pretty crazy life cycle, and it creates a time where there's just pregnant females in a certain population, which is absolutely insane to think about, because if something happens to any of those females, boom, the yellow-footed antichinus in that area are completely gone. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to see one of these guys, because in an area like this where there's foxes and cane toads, it's fantastic to see that these guys are still holding on. So uh, let's leave this guy alone and continue searching for some snakes, mammals, and who knows what else. But from here on out, wildlife started cropping up virtually everywhere I looked. <laughs> branch is a beautiful tawny frog mouth. Look at him. Oh, I've never been this close to one. And off he goes. That is the, the most effective avian predator out here at night. He was sitting up on this branch 
waiting for a little spider to scurry past on the ground or an insect to fly past him like a moth and uh, if there was one he'd jump off the log into the air or onto the ground and scoop him up in his massive frog-like mouth and swallow it whole. Check this out, check this out. There's a koala what, right on the ground here. He's gonna jump up into this tree. How cool is that? That's probably a little female. And how awesome is that bright, yellowish, white eye shine? I'll turn my light down a bit. Sorry, buddy. That is so cool. <laughs> and off she goes. Oh, wow! Look at that. You probably can't see too well on this camera, but just up there on that she oak is, I think, a southern boobok, boobok owl. It's a bit hard to tell from this distance. It's just sitting there, staring straight at me. It's so, oh, off he goes. How cool is that? Two of the avian apex predators out here. The tawny frogmouth and the southern booble cow. As the moon rose even higher in the sky, it was almost time for me to start heading back home. But the bush had left some of my best encounters of the night till last. And the first was another new species that I've never seen before in the wild. No way! Look at that! That's either a sugar glider or a squirrel glider. I can't tell because I've never seen either species in the wild. The, the um, squirrel glider is much more common in this area and is much larger than the sugar glider, but they're both really small possums. How cool is that? That's got, the, that's got to be the cutest possum I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at that. This nocturnal possum spends most of its time up in the trees, and because of this, it's equipped with a large flap of skin between its front and hind limbs that it can extend as it jumps from tree to tree, giving it the amazing ability to glide for short distances. What a night for mammals. Then finally, a serpentine shape appeared from the darkness. Oh, look at this, look at this. Our first snake of the night. Oh, look how beautiful this. Oh, off he goes. That right there is the freshwater snake, the keelback. And he's a colubrid just like the green tree snake. And he's completely non-venomous. He's so chilled out, look at that. It is quite a cool night, so. He's not going to be the most active. Now there's a little bit of water down here and because of that, there'll be tons of frogs. So he's just moving through all these little reeds looking for a tasty frog to munch on. Unlike any other snake in Australia, this guy has the ability to eat and digest cane toads. Scientists believe that the ancestors of this species originated in Asia meaning that they co-evolved with similar toad species as the cane toad, resulting in the resistance to cane toad bufotoxin that we see today, making these snakes a critical part in the preservation of Australian ecosystems affected by toads. How beautiful. Oh, off he goes. See you, buddy. What a spectacular snake. Unfortunately, we didn't find as many snakes as I was hoping we would, but this place has given us so many mammal and amphibian species to counteract that. We found some of the strangest mammals on the face of the earth, from the tiny little squirrel glider, all the way to the carnivorous yellow-footed antichinus, and of course, the absolutely incredibly unique short-beaked echidna. We've seen the top avian nocturnal predators out here, which is of course the southern boobook owl and the tawny frogmouth. But the cherry on top of this entire night has been the massive amount of frog species that we found. And of course, how can I forget about that absolutely beautiful keelback? The one snake we found tonight. So, 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bushland Adventures and I can't wait to take you back out into this absolutely beautiful patch of bush to find some more awesome nocturnal creatures. I'll see you next time. There was, if I can find it, a big ass eel. There it is, there he is, there he is. Look at that freshwater eel. <laughs>